the gifts of the Holy Spirit, wisdom and understanding, counsel and fortitude, knowledge and piety and fear of the Lord. But do we really understand the role that the Holy Spirit and his gifts play in our spiritual lives and in our day-to-day -day living? I suspect for a lot of us the answer is no. And I have to admit that in my own life, for a long time, the answer was no. Even though we Catholics have this great gift of the sacrament of confirmation that is supposed to give us an increase of these gifts, you'd think we'd learn about it. You'd think we'd talk about it all the time. And yet, we're more interested in praying to God our Father, to Jesus, or to Mary. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if some Protestants thought that Mary was the third person of the Holy Trinity as far as Catholics were concerned. But no, that isn't true. The Holy Spirit is our counselor and advocate, our God, whom Jesus sent to us to help us, to be with us, to give us comfort and encouragement. It's been said by some that the Holy Spirit is the forgotten person of the Blessed Trinity. And perhaps only in recent years, the church has come to place a more appropriate focus on him. We'll get to that idea in a moment. But as we enter this series to learn about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, let's pray that he may come into our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit didst instruct the hearts of the faithful, Grant that in the same spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's return to that idea of the Holy Spirit as the forgotten person of the Blessed Trinity. Some people have often presented this idea as if to emphasize, well, the church used to have it wrong, but now we have it right. I'm going to test that conclusion here, that idea. Traditionally speaking, there were a certain set of prayers that the priest, it was recommended to pray before celebrating Holy Mass each day. And of course, these can still be said, but they don't show up in the Missal anymore. And they involve an antiphon and psalms, kind of like the Liturgy of the Hours. But then there's a set of concluding prayers. And there was kind of this practice back before liturgical reform set in that you wouldn't just have a concluding prayer. You would have one after another after another. And it turns out that the concluding prayers for that preparation for Holy Mass for the priest and for the ministers helping him, every single one of them, except for one, was a prayer to the Holy Spirit. Now in this era where supposedly we focus more on the Holy Spirit, why don't we hear this treasury of prayers that seek his help in our life? So let's start by listening to what these prayers are. First, most gracious God, incline thy merciful ears unto our prayers, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, illumine our hearts, that we may be worthy to serve at thy holy mysteries and to love thee with an everlasting love. Second, O God, to whom every heart is open, every wish is spoken, and from whom no secret is hidden. Purify our inmost thoughts by the infusion of thy Holy Spirit, that we may love thee perfectly and praise thee worthily. Third, 
Enkindle, O Lord, our hearts and minds with the fire of the Holy Spirit, that we may serve Thee with a chaste body and please Thee with a clean heart. Fourth, illumine, we beseech Thee, O Lord, our minds with the paraclete who proceedeth from Thee, and lead us to all truth, just as Thy Son hath promised. Fifth, May the power of the Holy Spirit be with us, we beseech thee, O Lord, and may he mercifully cleanse our hearts and defend us from all harm. Sixth, O God, who taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that in the same spirit we may relish what is right and always rejoice in his consolation. And I'll include the fifth prayer, too, even though it doesn't Mention the Holy Spirit in the same way. O Lord, we beseech thee, visit our minds and cleanse our thoughts, that at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, he may find in us a place prepared for him, who with thee lives and reigns in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The seven gifts of the Holy Spirit are really important for our spiritual life. They're the way that he acts to help us live out Christian lives as they're meant to be. All of us know that it isn't that easy to live God's commands. We ask for God's help, but you know we struggle to live virtuously. The theological virtues, faith, hope, and charity, the cardinal virtues, fortitude, justice, temperance, and prudence. These are the hinges that our day-to-day -day lives, not just our spiritual lives, depend on. They're the way that we act justly. They're the way that we keep God's commandments. And what are the virtues? They're habits, right? And what is a habit? It's something that is sort of ingrained in us by repeated action. And when we look at the cardinal virtues, we understand that we have to do repeated actions. We have to repeatedly act justly. We have to repeatedly act moderately, etc., in order to obtain them. And we know that we fall short in this. But God doesn't leave us alone in this. He gives us the gifts of the Holy Spirit precisely to make up what is lacking in our ability on these virtues. And that's what I want to go to, into, especially in this series. You see, we know a lot about God our Father, His promises to Israel, all that good business how he cares for us as a father. We know a lot about our Lord Jesus Christ. We hear about him in every gospel reading. We pray to him all the time. He is our model for virtue, and he's the strength whereby we can live that virtue. But what did he tell his disciples, and by extension to us? He said that it was better that he leave us better that he leave us? Why? Because if he didn't go to the Father, he wouldn't send the paraclete, our advocate, our comforter, who proceeds from the Father, who he would send in his Father's name. This is the Holy Spirit, and he's just as much God as the other persons of the Trinity. He's just as much worthy of our worship. He's just as much worthy of our forming a relationship with him. And he comes into our hearts to help us. To help us to act, to help us to pray. So, when you were confirmed, you were perhaps taught what the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit are. Wisdom and understanding counsel and fortitude, knowledge and piety and fear of the Lord. And I would hope that you were taught what they were. Do you remember them? Could you rattle them off on the top of your head? I thought not. You see, that's a problem. 
because the gifts of the Holy Spirit are our key to growing in the spiritual life and living the lives that God intended for us to live. And so through this series, I hope to help you learn what they are. Let's start just by repeating them. I'm going to say a certain set of them, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to repeat them after me. I'm going to do this twice, and then I'm going to invite you to repeat them all together with me. So here we go. Wisdom and understanding. Counsel and fortitude. Knowledge and piety and fear of the Lord. Let's try that again. Wisdom and understanding. Counsel and fortitude knowledge and piety and fear of the Lord. Now let's try that all together. Wisdom and understanding, counsel and fortitude, knowledge and piety and fear of the Lord. Okay, good job, folks. Now I'm going to keep doing this in every video to make sure you've got it because this is important. And why is it important? Remember that one of the names of the Holy Spirit is the gift of God. And he, as a gift, helps us in seven particular ways, and those are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, imagine somebody left to you seven million dollars, and he put a million each in a different bank. If you didn't know what the name of those banks were, how on earth were you going to get the money? In just the same way, if you don't know what the gifts of the Holy Spirit are and what their names are, how on earth are you going to use them? How on earth are you going to ask the Holy Spirit for them? So let's get into it. We have these seven gifts, wisdom and understanding, counsel and fortitude, knowledge and piety and fear of the Lord. What are they? Well, let's look at them in the opposite order, because St. Bonaventure tells us that there's a certain direction that we need to look at these gifts in. And if we do it in reverse order, it can help us understand. And why would that be? There's a saying in the Psalms and elsewhere in Scripture, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom is this great, high, exalted thing. It's a goal that we should all be looking at. And fear of the Lord is emphasized as the starting point for that. It's kind of an entry-level thing. And now, even though all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to us when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in our hearts, when we are in a state of grace and haven't committed a mortal sin, nonetheless, we kind of need to focus on particular ones depending on where we are. And there's a certain logic to them, and as it so happens, at least as far as St. Bonaventure is concerned, and you can find evidence for it in a lot of places, the best place to start is fear of the Lord, and then re work in reverse order up to wisdom. And this is confirmed for us because there are certain places where we see the number seven that we can also find the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and we find them so often in this order. The first and most important place is the Lord's Prayer. Now, why do I say that? When our Lord taught about prayer, he said, Knock, and the door will be opened. Seek and ye shall find, and all that good stuff. And he says, what good thing is the Father going to deny his children who ask when we who are wicked would give our children bread when they ask for bread, not a stone? Who would give our children fish when they ask, not a snake? Well, in Luke particularly, Jesus says, how much more 
Will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So when we talk about prayer as unfailing, the particular prayer that God will always answer is the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And what is the perfect way to pray? It's the Our Father. When the disciples asked Jesus, how do we pray? He gave them the Our Father. And so let's look at it. We first address God saying, Our Father who art in heaven. And then there are seven petitions. The first one is, Hallowed be thy name. Well, that lines up with fear of the Lord. We tremble at the majesty and honor of God's name. That the people of the Old Testament were even afraid to utter, lest they profane it. Thy kingdom come. Are we not asking for this? Are we not asking in this for the gift of piety? Of reverence shown towards God when we're asking for his kingdom to come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How can we do God's will if we don't know God's will? By the gift of knowledge, we know what God's will is and we're given the ability to pursue it just as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. What is this but a prayer for the gift of fortitude, of being strengthened by the food we consume, our spiritual food, the Holy Eucharist, to be able to stand firm when it becomes difficult to do what is right? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or more accurately, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, speaking mainly about sin. How can we understand what it means to forgive unless we have the gift of counsel, knowing what is the right thing to do at the right time, of being truly merciful? And lead us not into temptation. With the gift of understanding, we begin to understand precisely what God's will is in a particular situation. Sometimes he puts us into times of trial, but only when he knows that we will succeed by his help. We can begin to see the world spiritually, to understand our temptations spiritually and not in a worldly way. And finally, deliver us from evil, or more accurately, deliver us from the evil one. When we have the gift of wisdom, we see everything in the right light. We will not be drawn into evil. And so, our perfect prayer is precisely a prayer for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, in the order that we can perhaps best unlock them. What an amazing thing. As we go through this series, you're going to find out that there are connections to other things to the Beatitudes, to the seven sorrows of Mary, each of which, in that same order, can help us to see how the gifts of the Holy Spirit were active in Mary's life and how to obtain them. Let us ask God for these seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let us come to understand better what they are, so that sin can be cast out of our lives and that we may do God's will. Come, Holy Spirit, come by means of the powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.